Sean Salisbury here for Open Sports. Two college football games stick out to me. Now, a lot of them I'm interested in. Obviously, when USC plays, I'm interested. And I'm also interested in all the teams that are in front of them. So let's talk about the two main games. It's Florida, Georgia, and it's Texas Tech hosting Texas. And start with Florida, Georgia. Huge game with major national championship implications. Obviously, it's on a neutral site in Jacksonville. We see it there every year. The keys to this game, the best one-two punch in America on the same team are Sean Marino and are Matthew Stafford, both big-time pro prospects but great college football players. They've got to generate the big play in this game. They must. Sean must get over 100 yards rushing and have some carries, and they must be able to run play-action fake and stop Florida from pressuring them. On the other side of the football, and Stafford has got a big-time arm, so they can, they can make and manufacture some big plays. Sean Marino must be the key in controlling the football and keeping Tim Tebow on the sidelines. Florida just keeps charging and charging. Uh, Urban Meyer can flat out coach folks. Whether you like his style or not, he can coach. And Tim Tebow can play. With a couple keys for Georgia. Every week I say for, for a team to stop Tebow or stop Florida, first and foremost, you got to take away his legs. But there has been times where people have taken away his legs and he's still able to beat you with his arm. This is a game that they got to make Tebow go this way, horizontally. they got to make him play east-west because Georgia's defense can run. They're athletic and they can get after it. Again, you can't let Tebow take over a game and throw three touchdowns and rush for two or Georgia will not win this game. They have got to find a way to force Tebow. He can't be in third and three or, or second and two because then he can get in that gun and run the football and move the clock and keep Marino and Stafford on the sidelines. This is one of those games that ball control and control and it will be huge. Now, there will be some big plays. And that's the other thing Georgia's got to do. If you stop Tebow from running the ball, you can't allow him to flag that little gun play action, drop back and hit a touchdown pass on you for 60, 70 yards. You're, you can't give up those chunk plays or those explosive plays that we call. Georgia has got to make Tebow play horizontal football, and they've got to win early down so Tebow is in third and eight, third and nine, to where even if he has a pretty good run and a physical run up inside, it's six, seven yards, and they punt. I like Georgia in the football game. I think they're more versatile, and I think their defense is going to have to come up with some huge plays. The last time they were challenged in a huge game, well, they've been in a lot of huge games. It's the SEC. But Alabama stunned them with the way they moved the football on offense. And Florida's got a better offense than Alabama, trust me, with a better quarterback. So that being said, take away Tebow, you win. But you can't just take away. He can't get 9, 12, 15 yards rushing. Force on long downs for Florida to have to throw and not allow Tebow to get his six-yard physical run and beat you that way. I like Georgia, and I think this is going to be an awesome football game. The national championship still in front of them, and a BCS possibility, these two teams are still in it. The other game, Texas Tech and Texas. I love this. I'm taking Texas Tech in the upset. Now, this is tough. Texas has proved to me that they are, they are the best team in America. But, man, if they can do it this week, what would this be the fourth game that they've played in a row that they've had to beat a top-10 team? Texas Tech, Missouri, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State. Every time you turn around, they've got to beat somebody good, and they've earned it. If they can do it again in Lubbock on the road, there's no question who the best team in America is. There's a, we know both teams can score, and both teams will score. Which quarterback turns it over is going to be the difference. When you've got explosive offenses and big-time players, it's going to come down to the quarterback who makes the least amount of mistakes and who can make it happen in the end. Both of these guys are Heisman candidates. Colt McCoy is the leader. Graham Harrell doesn't get as much publicity, but he puts up numbers every week. I'm not worried about the numbers. But if you're a defense, you must force a few turnovers, and you must... It can't be match touchdown for field goal. It's got to be touchdown for touchdown. And you will see a guy like Mike Leach, if he's down 10 points and it's third down and, or fourth down and four, you will see him go for it in this football game if it comes to that. Colt McCoy can beat you with his feet and his arm. They've got to limit that because the guy can run a lot like Tebow. Now, Tebow's a bigger version, but Colt McCoy's quick and can move around. I'm taking Tech in the upset because for the emotions of Texas to keep doing this and keep doing this, I mean, it's amazing what they've done. And for him to every single week to respond, a tribute to Mac Brown, how he gets his team prepared to play at the University of Texas. But they're going on the road to Lubbock again. Texas Tech, I was at this game about three or four years ago, and you can't let Texas jump on you early, or the ball game's done. Texas Tech doesn't want to play from behind, even though they've given up, what, three sacks all year long, Texas Tech, and two of them in last week's game, that they don't want to be in such a situation where the blitz is coming all the time and they're getting hit and fumbled. You've got to continue to have your offensive line play well up front, block out so that Graham Harrell can deliver the ball, and you can run out of that also. And they're going to throw it 40, 50 times, but they want to control it. They don't want to be in, in, in you know, where they're punting and kicking field goals and matching Texas with touchdowns. I mean, Texas is scoring their touchdowns, and you can't match that. So 
with that four-point swing, and this happens every time, you'll be t down 21 points before you know it, and you're not going to track Texas down, even as good as Texas Tech offense is. So control and force turnovers. You keep an eye on whatever quarterback turns it over more is not going to win this game. Watch the emotion, a night game in Lubbock. It's good. They haven't had a game this big in I don't know how long, and they've had some big ones. This is as big a game as Mike Leach has ever coached and as big a game as they will ever play in. Let's see whose emotions stand higher. Do they get so emotional that the first quarter their energy has gone, or can you keep your, level, your emotions level and find a way to get it done? I'm taking Tech in the upset. If Texas wins this game, they're not only going to go to the BCS championship game, they've proven without question, and it's not close, trust me, who the best team in America is if they can win this game. If not, they still got a shot. This is going to be a great football game. I'm taking Texas Tech in an upset this weekend. So you think you can tackle a pro? There's only one way to find out. Click on fantasy at opensports.com.